say boots and cats and boots and cats. Yep. And we're back with another episode of the Fast Lane Now Live. Welcome, guys, to another live show. Uh, we got a lot of fun stuff to talk about today, as we always do. Uh, two, not one, but two top ten lists. Mm -hmm. And we also have another segment of no, you're wrong. And you are most certainly wrong again today, Tommy. But before we do that, we have to get to some news. So do you want to tell them what's going on? Or maybe I should tell them what's going on? Yeah, you should tell them what's going on. I should on. tell them what's going on. Uh, okay, so as you guys know, probably it's been all over YouTube and the internet for the past couple weeks, but uh, Volkswagen had a very successful year this year at the uh, Pikes Peak International Hill Climb. Wow. They broke not only the electric record, but the overall record for the course with the IDR Pikes Peak. And today, they finally, that's, that's the car right there. It's a beautiful machine. Uh, but they finally released the helicopter footage of the whole record setting seven minute, 57.148 second run. Uh, so it's up on YouTube on Volkswagen's page. We also have an article up on TFL Car where mm -hmm. you can watch the run. But here's some footage from it. Uh, this thing just rips up the mountain. It's really cool to watch. Look at it go. Blazing speed. Oh, there's that's the Devil's Playground with many spectators watching. I didn't know you put my uh, Hoover in there. Your Hoover? Yeah, it's weird. It sounds like they took the in-car... No, the in-car audio and then like splice it over the helicopter footage because the helicopter footage would just sound like <laughs> you know the whole time. <laughs> Wait, do that noise again? <laughs> That's my helicopter noise. You hear, heard it here first, guys. Yeah. That's um, what helicopters sound like. So uh, next up on the news is Toyota has developed a NASCAR. They have another one. There it is. It's the Supra. Uh, exciting news about the Supra actually. So. Not only did they reveal this NASCAR Supra body, but they've actually, uh, it's been revealed today that the actual Supra will uh, debut at the Goodwood Festival of Speed, which is up, coming up at the end of this month. That's so cool. So we're really close to seeing the new Supra. And I think as a result of that, we also learned that the new Supra will be coming out sometime early next year. Uh, so, so a new Supra is on the horizon, Tommy. This NASCAR has a 5.8 liter pushrod V8 with a four-speed manual transmission. Ooh. I kind of hope that the new Supra will have a 5.8 liter pushrod V8 with a four-speed manual. How cool would that be? I, I hope it does, but I know it won't, which is, <laughs> <laughs> which is unfortunate. It's also carbureted with up to 700 horsepower. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. But look at it. It looks really cool. It looks like the Supra from the wheel forward, and then back it's just kind of a normal NASCAR body. Michael, it's kind of ugly. It looks nothing like a Supra. The front end, like, head-on it looks like a Supra, yeah. and then the rest of it is not at all Supra. Okay. Yeah. I don't know why they're doing that. I don't know if Supra's name is necessarily... Um, well, it used to be a Camry, so maybe Supra has a bit more racing gravitas. But than... Supra's not associated <laughs> with NASCAR. So. No, no, it's not. But yes, it is carb, Chase. Good, uh, good figuring that out. So it'll compete, uh, it'll compete at Daytona. In February 2019. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't. That's. You're not a big NASCAR I don't. Fan. I know. I don't understand why Toyota is doing that with the Supra. Well, it's better than the Camry, right? Well, I guess it's better than the Camry, but like that's that's actually no. It is. It's worse than the Camry because NASCAR in the past has always been, you know, like family cars or or muscle cars, which were family cars at right, one point. Right. You yeah. know, with big engines. This is like a, a cornering monster, a Supra that's supposed to be twin turbocharged with a classic straight six, and they're sticking a V8 in it and doing NASCAR. I don't get that. Yeah, that's a little weird. Hey, we forgot something, though. Uh, we have some amendments to the Super Chat uh, and the Welcome to the Hood segment. So if you guys can notice right here, we got a bell to be extra obnoxious about it. Michael got a bell, so you may want to tune out now. I got a bell. So uh, we've made some changes to the way that the Welcome to the Hood segment works. Uh, so any donation to the Super Chat of $5 or more will still get you on the hood, and it will get a bell ring, just like that. If, if that pushes you over the edge for the donation, I know, this is bell rings. This is really, yeah, we, we, can, we can up the bell ring number. Um, but then we've added a, a different sort of amount to be jumping for. So if you guys give $10 to the Super Chat, we will send you this lovely TFL truck sticker. Mm -hmm. uh, just send us an email at info at tflcar.com, uh, and we will send you a sticker in the mail. Give us your address. Um, there it is. Bam. They're awesome stickers. And then, of course, uh, $50 still will get you a hat with your choice of signed or unsigned, and we'll throw on the sticker anyways. And put you on the hood. And put you on the hood. So 5 bucks for the hood, 10 bucks for the sticker. One more thing, Michael. Oh, yeah. These hats, I don't think you can get them anywhere else. No, you can't. Like, literally, the team is the only people that have access to these hats. Yes. So it's yeah. like 
me, you, my dad, obviously, Roman, um, that's my dad, yeah. Nathan, Andre, <laughs> Mr. Truck, we all have these, but nobody else has these unless you donate. Except for Street Muscle 215, Brent Vane, Jason Lasserre, Michael Schickschnitz. You know, I don't know why we haven't put these. Others. I don't know why we haven't put these on sale yet, but they're exclusive. So they look are at it exclusive. that way. They what are, are exclusive. we talking about today, Michael? Okay, so today we got a really cool list from our friends at IC Cars, who do a lot of interesting car research. Uh, and the first list today is the top ten most driven passenger cars. Yeah. Uh, so this is on average which cars get driven the most miles per year, uh, at least I think here in the U.S. So uh, number ten on the list is the what? Before we start. Whoa! Oh my gosh! Holy moly! Okay. Oh. <laughs> that we gets need a big to take old. Take that bell away from you, Michael. Woo! -hoo! Okay, so uh, Teddy's Lift World. Thank you, Teddy's Lift World, for the fifty dollars super chat donation. Um, they requested to have a sign, uh, a hat signed by Tommy, Mike, and Roman. Yeah, so, of course. Yeah, of course we can do that. Any, anyone else, if you want them to sign it as well. Uh, we'd be happy to do that so for you. So send us your info at info at tflcar.com. Wow, that's terrible. Where we can send your hat, we'll get that to you right away. Info at tflcar.com. Yeah, just give us uh, your name and your shipping address. Absolutely. And we'll, we'll send it along your way as soon as possible. Thank you so much. Top again. 10 most driven cars. This, um, according to iccars.com, the average mileage driven, 11,000. 518 according to the site and the number 10th most driven car the Chevrolet Malibu with an average yearly mileage of 11,834 miles uh, which is 2.7 percent above the average so uh, Malibu drivers drive their Malibus more than the average driver drives their car the Malibu is actually a really good car um, now you can get it with a little turbocharged four-cylinder mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh, and they have you know teen driving assistance all sorts of electronic goodies, and I think the new one looks really good. This would be like a Malibu Classic, yeah. or an older generation Malibu that you see here, but the new one's pretty sharp. Um, you know, it's still a large sedan, right? So it's it's not going to be that fun to drive, but I think it's a very solid car. It'll certainly take you at least 11,000 miles in a year, probably, without, <laughs> yeah, who knows. Hey, should we address that question? You let me know. Yeah, so here. JT asked, Tommy, how come we don't see Charlotte anymore? Charlotte got a job in Denver. Yep. Um, we were doing chemistry of cars, but she moved on to bigger and better things. Chemistry of water, if you will. Chemistry of water, yep. yep. She works with water on a daily basis. Um, so she's no longer poking around here, but we still talk to her. Uh, she still was a great time to have on the team. Mm -hmm. um, that's what happened to Charlotte. We miss her dearly, but she has moved on to pursue a different career. Absolutely. Yeah, we okay. respect that. Next up on the list is the Nissan Maxima. 11,862 miles per year. 3% above average. Ooh, look at that. Um, it's got a CVT, which would put it lower on the list of my preferable vehicles. Okay. Uh, but otherwise, actually, it's not a bad place to be. Nissan is pretty forward uh, when it comes to a lot of standard tech features. Uh, they are one of the first companies to introduce the top-down 360-degree camera, which is probably one of my favorite features on a car today. Yeah, oh yeah. Uh, I really love that feature, so thanks to Nissan for making that a more regular thing. But uh, yeah, the, there you go, the, 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 uh, the Maxima. I think it's a great-looking car, by the way. Oh, yeah, I, it's good. I really like the uh, floating roof design in the back, you know, that's common. But I think the headlights are really aggressive. And then the daytime running lamps here, um, really an effective uh, design cue. Can be had with a big old V6. Which is becoming kind of unusual today, you Very know, unusual. in a world that's really transitioned to small four-cylinder turbochargers. Yeah, totally. Um, this is a funny question from Gregor. What is the name of your hula girl? Does she have a name? You have to ask my dad. My dad is obsessed with hula girls. Maybe for some it's Conan. You know, he told me the story about that. <laughs> he used to do this. He used to cover uh, what was it, an Ironman race, triathlon. In, a triathlon in Kona, Hawaii. Yeah. And so I guess one time he picked up a, a hula girl thing for his dashboard there, or he, or he got he got that as a reminder of that trip that he used to do um, on a Matthew regular basis. Matthew says Maxima is a nice car. They need to make a Nismo version. Absolutely, they do. That'd be sweet with all like slap the GTR drivetrain, maybe a little detune under a Maxima. That'd be cool. You know, you can now get a Passat with a V6 too. So not just a, not just any V6, a VR6, the V6 from the Volkswagen Group. Yeah, so you can get a big old V6 in a sporty Passat now, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a more performance-oriented sedan to compete with vehicles like the Camry V6 and, of course, Maxima right here. 
Um, okay, number eight is the Honda Civic Sedan, 11,894 miles, driven per year on average, 3.3% above the mean. This might be one of the actually better cars on this list, frankly. The Civic right now is really fun uh, with the little 1.5 liter turbo, or if you spring for the 2 liter, or do they offer the 2 liter on this? In the, uh, no, I no, think that's, in the, the Accord. that's the Type R. So if, if you get the yeah, 2 yeah, liters yeah. available in the Type R, Civic. Uh, and actually, Chase Younggreen just asked us uh, if we had a Type R to review. We did last summer. A long while ago. A little while ago. Yeah. So uh, you can actually check back in the TFL archives on YouTube, uh, and it should pop up if you search our YouTube channel for a Civic Type R. You'll find our review on that. That was a really fun car. I actually kind of miss it, and I would love to get one back someday soon. Um, but yeah, people drive them, uh, drive them pretty far in a year. You know what's really cool about the... Um, Civic Type R is, it's got a lot of power, mm. uh, six-speed manual transmission only, but there's no torque steer on None. the Civic Type R. But the Civic you want to buy, you heard, it, heard, you heard it here first, in my opinion, is the new Honda Civic Hatch Sport. So that gives you the 1.5 liter turbo, essentially the same engine that you get in the Civic Si. Mm -hmm. uh, with the Sport package, you get these cool sporty dual exhausts that come out the middle. Really cool little car, really fun to drive. Uh, that is the Civic I would get in a heartbeat. Also, very affordable. I think the one you drove was like 21, 21.5 or something like that. That's not bad at all. And I think the cool thing about the Civic Hatch Sport as opposed to the Civic Type R yeah. uh, is that you know the Type R is pretty controversial, I guess, with its styling. And, and the, the, the Hatch, the Sport Hatch, uh, is a, l a lot less aggressive, but still sporty looking, but it's not quite as uh, flamboyant maybe as the Type R is. So you get kind of the same looks, but toned down a little bit from the Type R. Okay, next up, number seven is the Mazda 6, 11,902 miles driven per year. Sorry, number seven, I don't know if I said that. Uh, yeah, number seven, 3.3% above the average. We just had the new Mazda 6 Turbo, yep. uh, which was a really fun car to drive. The only shame about that is that you can't get the turbocharged engine with the manual transmission. You can get a Mazda 6 with a manual, yep. uh, but you cannot get the turbocharged, what, 2.5 liter with, uh, with, a, with a manual, which That's is okay. a bit of a shame. Yeah, you really don't need it. You don't need it. Uh, what is interesting is that they've put in a six-speed automatic mm -hmm. uh, and not a CVT or not a dual clutch at the same time. Uh, Nathan had a chance while we were at the LA Auto Show to talk with one of Mazda's chief engineers about that choice and it's kind of interesting that they Mazda basically just thinks that at this point the automatic transmission with a good old-fashioned torque converter is actually the better way to get the nice mix of sporty feel quick shifts but also a smooth ride and better fuel economy cool yeah I need to make a correction here I said earlier the Maxima competes with something like a Camry I misspoke it's a slightly bigger it compete more with like an Avalon so it's a size up um, but let's keep going down our list and let's talk about number six the Honda Civic Coupe um, 11,931 miles driven per year, which is 3.6% above average. So we have both the Civic Sedan at 8 and the Civic Coupe at 6. We need a, we're, we're going to get one singular ding. Thank you, Juan Guzman, for the $1 donation. Very nice uh, of you. Very nice of Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So um, Honda Civic Coupe is one of my favorite cars you can buy today. Um, we had one a long while back in this crazy green color um, yeah. with the 1.5 turbo and a CVT, and that's actually a really good little CVT. As CVTs go, and you'll notice a trend, a lot of these cars on this list are CVTs, but yeah. as CVTs go, that um, Civic is super good. Yeah, not bad. It's not bad. Uh, I actually really like the Civic Coupe as well. It's uh, it's kind of interesting to me that Honda, you, know, you notice that the, the last Civic we talked about was a sedan. I don't know if we clarified that. Yeah. Uh, number eight was a sedan, number number six is the coupe. Yeah. Uh, but it's cool that Honda offers the Accord or the Civic in a coupe, a sedan, and a hatchback. Oh, yeah. Uh, which is something that maybe not a lot of, like a lot of manufacturers are kind of going away from offering multiple models or the same model in different body styles. Uh, so it's cool that they offer it in, in all three body styles. Our next car is exactly what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. That is number four, the Honda Accord Coupe. There it is. Man, number five. I just can't count today. Honda <laughs> Accord Coupe, 11,994 miles, driven on average, 4.1% above average. Same thing you're talking about where you, you know, you've got a coupe variant mm -hmm. of, a, uh, of a sedan. And then number four is the Honda Accord Sedan, which yeah. is 12,190 miles driven per year. 5.8% above average. Yeah, the one bummer about the Accord Coupe, uh, it used to be available with a V6, and that is no longer the case, but you can get it with that 2-liter turbocharged engine uh, and a 6-speed manual. While it's still around. It's While it's still around, uh, which I think is a 
excellent car to purchase. That's a really fun, if you uh, can fun find package. One. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you might have to order one, frankly, to make that happen. But well, number three is the Chevrolet Impala. We're getting smaller or yeah. bigger. Sorry. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's bigger, Michael. <laughs> smaller in numbers, bigger in cars. Uh, 12,198 miles per year on average, according to IC Cars, which is 5.9% above the 11,518 mile per year average yep. in the U.S. Uh, you were talking about earlier uh, the sort of safety features that Chevy is including on their vehicles, and I think it's really interesting. Obviously, a lot of cars these days have like a valet mode, mm -hmm. uh, but Chevy has been very forward about introducing this like parent watch mode for teenage drivers basically where parents can go in and set up a lot of different parameters and kind of put it in like a like a teenage driver nanny mode almost yeah uh, which i'm sure i would have found very frustrating when i was 16 years old but it might be a good idea if you you know you don't want your kids to get into any uh, any kind of trouble while they're on the road well another thing we need to talk about is you know we talked about the variations right mm -hmm. um and unfortunately a cord coupe has gone away so it's oh, it's dang. it's not with us anymore because Goodbye, there's, you know coupe. it's been redesigned um, I, and I don't know if there's any word on, on the future of the Accord Coupe, yep. um, but it, it was peace. a really cool car, so I'd love to see that come back at some point. Yep. Um, number two is the Toyota Prius, <laughs> 12,279 miles driven per year, 6.6% above average. Oof. Why, why did you go oof? Oof, man. I, the Prius is just the car that is the bane of my existence, and I'm sorry. Have you driven the new one? Uh, yes, I have, and I'm still not a fan. I've never been a fan of the Prius. You know, Tommy, that's one of those cars that it seems like every time I'm caught behind a slow driver that's doing something, like they're not taking their own right of way, or they're like doing something silly on the road, like eight times out of ten it's a Prius. I'm sorry to Prius drivers, I don't mean to offend anybody. I love the um, new Prius, actually. Why do, why do you like it? Well, the new Prius is just full of so much cool tech and design. Um, if you get like a, a, a Prius 4, right, a, a top-of-the-line Prius, you get this huge display in the center. It almost looks like a Tesla. I think it's 11 or 12 inches vertically. It's just a really big display. Um, you can get this white and black interior that mm -hmm. looks like a stormtrooper exploded on the inside. Um, but it's really cool looking. And it's not that terrible to drive anymore. I think... Uh, you know, it's still pretty pokey in terms of acceleration, but the ride is good. It's pretty compliant. Um, and actually, I kind of like driving hybrids because you can play with, like, the power distribution of, you know, yeah. when it's electric yeah. mode and gas mode and in between. I think that's really fun to do. So I don't actually hate driving the new Prius. It's not a lot of fun, um, but it's, uh, it's not bad. See, that reason that you just said for why you like to drive it mm -hmm. is I think the reason that it becomes so frustrating to other drivers because... That car is probably one of the worst about overloading the driver with information about uh, driving information. So, like, um, how much, you know, power is getting sent to where, what the regeneration is doing. And it's kind of actively pushing you to be a more efficient driver. But what that ends up doing, I think, is making people drive slower so they drive more efficiently uh, and therefore frustrate more drivers. So that... That might be uh, the the your your reason for liking it might be the reason that I dislike it. Well, a lot of people are disagreeing with me on the Prius, and I completely understand. But you got to think about this: when the Prius debuted, um, you know, in Japan first in the late '90s, and then came here, um, you know, around the same time, a little bit later, mm -hmm. early 2000s. Um, it was a really groundbreaking car, right? I mean, it was it was one of the first applications or real world applications of um, a hybrid and uh, uh, sorry, electric and gas combo that worked effectively and really drove like a normal vehicle. Uh, and, and for that, like, obviously as a car guy, you know, we look down on the Prius. But if you take yourself away from that for a sec and think about it on a strictly engineering standpoint, thinking about how much engineering it took to make that all work, it's pretty cool. So that's why I really like the Prius in there, terms of um, its uniqueness. There is one Prius that I like, Tommy. Yeah? It's the one with the uh, crate engine from a Demon. Yeah, or, or a Hellcat, Hellcat. yeah. yeah. Yeah, that one I like. That's Num a cool Prius. So number one is the Nissan Altima, 12,495 miles driven year, 8.5% above average. That is a lot of miles, um, you know, given our list. And yeah. it's a good car. Once again, CVT. So we've got one, two. Wow, we've got a lot of potential CVTs depending Three, on four, transmission. Maxima has a CVT. Five. Like half the list, at least, has a CVT. You also have notice we have a high volume of Japanese makers um, <laughs> and two Chevrolets. Two Chevys and everything else is Japanese, but that's you know kind of understandable. They probably would be going the most. Yeah, you have anyways. to ring the bell. Whoa! Hey, Tyler, die uh, nine dollars ninety nine cents. We will count that as ten dollars. Um, so Tyler, you have earned yourself one amazing TFL truck sticker. Thank you so much for the donation. Your name is now on the hood. Welcome to the hood. 
And thanks again for sponsoring our Super Chat. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, please send us an email, info at tflcar.com, with your name and shipping address, and we'll get this off to you very soon. Awesome. OK, next up is the top 10 least driven cars. This is brought to you by the uh, same site, icars.com. Yep. Um, and you'll notice a trend. These tend to be a little bit more on the sportier side. So we're not, yeah. we're not talking about trucks on this list. No. Um, but these are all cars. And number 10, maybe unsurprisingly, is the Ford Mustang Coupe, 8,990 miles per year, which is about 21% below average. Woof. Uh, yeah, that's understandable. You know, we just had uh, a friend of Andre's actually on the, uh, an episode of Is It Faster Than a Fiesta ST, uh, which that will be going up probably this weekend, correct? Okay. Or, or very soon at least. Yep. Uh, within the next week, week or so. I think it'll probably be around next Friday. Okay, next Friday. Yep. Uh, so within a week. Uh, and he has an 01 Mustang, a bullet Mustang. Uh, it's uh, production number 101. It's really cool. It's a really clean car. 13,000 miles on a 17-year-old car, yeah. uh, and it's a Mustang, so maybe that uh, should have been a good hint to us that the Mustang... Oh, whoa, 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 Matt! Okay, the bell is kind of annoying. Matt Wu, $10. Thank you so much, Matt. You will also be receiving a TFL truck sticker. Once again, send us an email, info at tflcar.com with your address. We'll get this on the way to you. Uh, should we sign these? Would it make sense? I don't know if there's anywhere to sign No, because they're don't have bumper a, stickers. They're bumper stickers. Um, thanks, Matt. We really appreciate it. Uh, but anyways, yeah, people don't. Uh, people like to keep them in a garage and maybe drive them on the weekends. Um, Bill Blair asks us a question. What is going on with the Lincoln? I have not seen the Diamond Jubilee in a long time. It is like three feet that way beyond yeah, the wall. Yeah, it's just on the other side of this wall. So a lot of people thought that it was dead because we took the hood off um, and are using it to sign people's names. I actually got a new hood for it off another Diamond Jubilee. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it's not doing a whole lot. It just needs a heap of work and a heap of attention. And I don't have the bandwidth right now to, to make anything special happen. But we're yeah. holding on to it. Um, not going anywhere. So, um, you know, hopefully stay tuned sometime in the future. I'd like to get to that car. And number nine on our list is the BMW 6 Series Coupe, 8,895 miles driven per year, 22% um, below average. Did I say 8 Series? 6 Series. Okay, uh, my brain is just fried. Let me tell you what we just did today. Yeah, what did you guys do? Um, Mr. Truck and my dad took the big green truck and Mr. Truck's Dodgezilla, yep. or as my dad calls it, Crudzilla, <laughs> up um, some muddy Colorado trails. Yeah, your jeans are all kinds of muddy. Yeah, and if, if you were to uh, see me without this flannel on, I'd look like a mud cake. <laughs> um, so we, we got stuck in the mountains, um, and I don't know if they're going to make it down because they were super out of gas, uh -oh. and there was a thunderstorm <laughs> and lightning. No. So I had to come down to do this show, but they're still stuck up there. Um, we'll have to wait and see what the scoop with that is. That's a classic TFL misadventure in the making once again. In the making, yeah. Oh, boy. Um, okay, so BMW 6 Series uh, is number nine. Number eight is the Ford Mustang Convertible. <laughs> Another Mustang. Uh, actually, I'm not surprised that the convertible would see even less miles than the coupe mm -hmm. because yeah. uh, you'd probably want to drive it when it's sunny out, so you have less potential days to drive it. You know what my issue with the Mustang Convertible is, and it depends on the state that you live in, but every time I see one, you know, unless it's like some special performance pack Mustang or has um, you know a little bit of, of customization to it. I just like, especially in white or silver, it just looks like a rental car to me. Unless yeah. Mustang convertible in white or silver, I just I like I can't get that out of my head. I Instantly was, a rental car. Yeah, I was like yeah. fortunate enough to go to Hawaii um, a little while back. Oh yeah. And it's like every other car there is a Mustang convertible rental car. You know we're getting a Mustang soon. Are we? I think at the end of this month we're getting a Mustang. That's so cool because yeah. here in Colorado we usually get like trucks and SUVs which we love, but we never get any of the. Uh, uh, 40 fun cars. cars, yeah. Yep. Um, number seven on the list is, <laughs> this is funny, the BMW 6 Series Convertible. So we have the Mustang Coupe and the uh, 6 Series Coupe, and then the Mustang Convertible and the 6 Series Convertible. Uh, it drives uh, 7,692 miles a year on average, according to iccars.com. Makes sense. Number six on our list is one of my favorite cars, oh, the yeah. Mazda MX-5 Miata. It's not one of your favorite cars. You don't fit in a Miata. It's one of my favorite cars, Tommy. You, know, you don't like it. You can't fit. I love it. What are you talking about? You it's a great car. You aren't allowed to enjoy it if you can't I fit am in totally it. allowed to enjoy it, and I do enjoy it. And you know what? I'm going to enjoy it even more when the new one comes out because they've given it more horsepower, a telescoping steering wheel, which is huge for me with my big old beefy legs that I have. Uh, so I can finally move that steering wheel up out of the way of my legs so I can enjoy it even more. Are they raising the roof? No. Nor is it getting longer. 
But the, the steering wheel will tilt and telescope. Yeah, yeah. The, the, you, sorry, Mike, you are not allowed to enjoy that car. I am totally allowed to enjoy that car. No, you, you, you aren't. You just like, you look like someone shoved You know, a... like Mr. Incredible in that scene in the first Incredibles movie when he's driving around in his little car? Yeah, that's what you look that's like. That's me in a Miata. You can't look cool in a Miata if you stick up above the windshield. Number five on our list is the Mercedes-Benz SL, a car built for tall people. Yes. Because it's German. Look at that. 6,217 miles driven per year on average, almost 50% below average. I'm starting to think that I don't drive very many miles a year. <laughs> I have a, what, three-year-old GTI with 18,000 miles, so I drive like less than 6,000 miles a year. Yep. What, what are you doing? Why are you not enjoying your GTI more? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I should go do more long road trips or yeah, something You need like to that. go out on the road. Matt asks us, how do I get my sticker? Send us an email, info at tflcar.com with your address, and we'll get it out to you. Um, next car is the Chevrolet Corvette Coupe, 4,939 miles driven per year. That is not a lot. So this is a, an odd one to me, though, because the new C7 Corvette is so refined, um, especially with an automatic, that that is a car you could easily drive every day. Easily, yeah. As a lot of these cars are, except for the Miata, because you don't fit. Right. Um, but the uh, Corvette's a really good car in this new C7 configuration, yeah. and if you can find them, um, base model, we did a little searching, base model C7s. Uh, throughout the country um, have pretty significant discounts depending on the dealer. Um, people are willing to shift them. Uh, dealers are willing to shift them yeah. off the lot. It's been out for a while now. so we, I, You could get like five grand off a of Corvette pretty easily, if not more. Yeah, we were looking in our area, um, and that was some of the examples we found. So yeah. go ahead and, and check your, uh, your local listings. You know why people don't drive these a lot? Why? I'm sorry to do this to you guys, but everybody that buys a Corvette is old. No, that is not true. That's true. Everyone, it's always... This is false advertising. It should be an old white man with gray hair. No, Michael, back in 1984, I think, the majority of people that bought a Corvette were old. But nowadays, it's such a good performance car. It handles so well. It is so fast. There's Z06 configurations. There's track yeah. packages. There's the ZR1 now. It is, it is becoming far more useful. Fastest car around our track. Corvette Grand Sport. Well, well Pike Speed car. Fastest road car around yeah. our track. Yeah. And that was a Grand Sport. We're not even talking Z06. We've taken M2s around our track. And... Um, you know, M5s, even M5s, Hellcats, and, all sorts of things. And the uh, Corvette convertible, even, <laughs> Transport has been the fastest. Uh, all right, number uh, three on the list, Porsche 911 Coupe. Ooh, that might be my dream car on the list, actually, I think. I love the 911, but it's too expensive. They are very expensive, and they're all turbocharged now, yeah. basically, unless you get the even more expensive ones. So that uh, is an average of 4,637 miles driven per year, which is actually, you know... You know, the 911 has become such um, a high-performance straight-line machine and handling machine. Mm -hmm. um, in some configurations, it's even boarding on supercar levels. Oh, for sure. You know, GT2, GT3, right? Yeah. Uh, so, actually, if you think, you know, 5,000 miles a year in, um, in, in, a, in a 911 isn't too terrible. Well, but to that point, actually, this is another car that is totally daily drivable. Yeah, uh, oh, absolutely. For sure. They are great to daily drive. Uh, number two on our list. Perhaps unsurprisingly, is a 911 convertible that's 60% below average, 4,500. And number one least driven car in the U.S., according to this list, is the Chevrolet Corvette convertible. Just over 4,000 miles driven per year. That is 62% above average. Below that's, average. That is a great looking car. Oh, yeah. Amazing. Um, it, yeah, the design on this is cool. I'm really excited to see what the mid-engine mid Corvette looks like. Yep. I'm curious how they're going to take that design language and apply it to a different body style. But here's the thing, though. If you get a uh, Corvette, you can get that removable panel on the uh, on the coupe, right? Yep. Which kind of turns it into like a... Yeah, like a target top. Like a target top. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And I think that's the one I would get over the convertible. Still get a lot of that rigidity of the um, coupe design. Plus, you can throw that target back on and have a, a standard coupe with the looks. Yeah. So that's the one I would definitely get. Last part of the show, Michael, we're having an argument. What is the perfect weekend toy? No, you're wrong. It is not the car you're thinking of. It is the car I'm thinking of, and it is not the car you're thinking of. Uh, Zach, could you just scoop back like three pictures to that 911 that we were on? Yeah. Uh, that is the perfect weekend toy if you have like 100 grand laying around. Um, especially, I, I would go for, if I had any hopes of buying a 911, I'd go for like a 911T which is kind of like the, uh, the, the touring model, the road going kind of lightened up. It has little pull tabs for door handles and all that fun stuff. Uh, or the GTS, which is kind of the next step up in track worthiness for the 911. I would not get the four, I'd go for the rear wheel drive one. But where would you, um, okay, where can you stretch the legs of a 911? On the track. 
But how many people realistically go to the track? Not many, but I think if I had a 911, that would mean that I had money, right? So I could actually afford to go to a trek, because right now I, uh, I, I am a, a post-college student, and I do not want to be spending my hard-earned cash from TFL uh, on tires for track days in my little GTI. I'm sorry, Mike, but getting to track for a lot of people is just its such a pain. They can be it's far. It's not a pain. You have to wake up so early in That's some fine. cases for track days. You have That's tires. Fine. Tires are expensive. Brakes are expensive. It's it's, it's great in concept, you know, people buy these track toys, they're like, oh, I'm going to be there every weekend for an open track day, it's going to be great, and then nobody ends up going. Well, so, okay, sir. Uh, track days are totally fun if you can find the time to go. Plus, plus, how fast do you go on track days? 80, 90? You're going you're gonna to end up in a ditch or in no, a sand trap or end up in a, a wall. Ditch. Your car, you literally will end up in a ditch because that's where you're going to be trying to go with that car. Yeah, I think if you want the perfect weekend toy, you need a off-roader. Um, you need a vehicle like a Jeep Wrangler, and I chose a Wrangler over like a 4Runner because if it's a toy, um, you want it to be as open and airy as possible. There's a saying, uh -huh. the less you have around you, the more fun it is. That's why motorcycles are so fun. Uh -huh. But you can uh -huh. pull the windshield down, the doors off, the roof off. Uh, this starts at 26 for a new one, which is far less than your stupid expensive hey, track toy that's hey. never going to see the track. And you can use this off-road all the time. Um, Obviously, it depends on where you live, but like in Colorado, I can go 30 minutes up the mountain and be in paradise off-road and have all sorts of trails at my disposal. Even in like the Midwest, um, you know, let's look at ORV parks. They're usually pretty cheap. Uh -huh. uh, you know, first of all, it's a great way to push the limits of yourself going a mile an hour, right? Yeah. You're not going to kill yourself necessarily going a mile an hour. You're not going to go through as many tires or brakes going a mile an hour. Uh -huh. yeah. um, it's just as fun. All right, let me rebut you for a second here. Uh, so you are spoiled as an off-roader because you live in the great state of Colorado, which I will admit is a wonderful state for going off-road. But right. there's a lot of states, say, east of here, that are not quite as mountainous as this state and I don't think would offer nearly as interesting off-road experiences. Maybe like mud bogging or something like that. But I can almost guarantee, depend, almost guarantee that you will be able to find an area or a park where you can push the limits of your rig, you can go out with friends, you can have the top down, you can hear people, you can talk to people, you're not stressed out. It's just relaxing, great way to connect with nature, great way to push yourself without really putting yourself in a lot of danger. As for the price point, I agree the 911 is quite expensive, but you could still go for something like, oh, I don't know, a Miata, perhaps. No one's tracking a Miata either. Well, people track Miatas all the time. What do you think? There's a whole like class of racing for just Miatas. But you still have wheels and tires and brakes. And yeah, but they're really small, cheap wheels and tires and brakes. Uh, I don't know about that. They're really small. And come on, a set of Miata tires is like 500 bucks at the max. Yeah, only 500 bucks. How much? How, how much did it cost to get your Jeep to off-roading capacity? Good, but you don't need to do my Jeep. You can go out and buy a four grand Wrangler YJ or Jeep Cherokee and have just That's as much fair. fun. That's fair. Well, guys, let me know what you thought of our Know You're Wrong. Yeah, you yeah let with, us know. Let us know. You disagree with. Um, and we look forward to seeing you next week. As a reminder, these are now $10 on Super Chat. We have hats for 50 Welcome to the Hoods for 5 yep. Thank you so much for your support. We really appreciate it. Um, I, I know it's, uh, it's, a, it's a big thing for you guys to come out here and, and give us your hard-earned income. But we really do appreciate it and put it to good use building the team producing more fun videos. I've got a really cool video coming up on TFL Car tomorrow. Um, I'm not going to tell you what it is because you're going to have to check it out and find out for yourself, but I will tell you this. Um, Diffloc Affordable Off-Roading is coming back to the channel. That's because I bought a new off-road rig for under $4,000 and it is awesome. It is pretty cool actually, i got to give you that one. Also Tommy, you and I just had a fun day full of adventures with our Super Beetle uh, yesterday, Felix. Uh, we went to a couple cool shops, a, a friend's garage, uh, we did a lot of cool stuff, we bought a lot of parts, and we're going to get some good revamping done to Felix uh, here shortly. So please keep an eye out for that video. Coming out on Sunday, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get another Beetle Diaries out to you guys very soon. Oh, absolutely. Guys, thank you so much for watching. We will see you here on Monday, 4 o'clock Mountain Central Time. Mountain Standard Time?